Right, so hello. So since it is October and the weather turned gloomy and I just want to read more and more dark books, I've decided to finally do the Dark Academia tag. I'm filming in the afternoon, so the sun is going to set soon. So the lighting will get kind of darker and darker and at some point I'll probably have to turn on more lights. But maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we'll become just like more cozy. <laughs> I feel like at this point the lighting is already pretty bad, but we're doing it, whatever. <laughs> so I printed out the questions because I didn't like how the glare from the laptop was looking at the camera. So the first question, what is your favorite academia or dark book plus movie? So. I will not be very original here uh, when I say that The Secret History by Donna Tartt is uh, my favorite dark academia book. This is the Polish edition and I actually really like it. This is how it looks and this is how it looks underneath the dust jacket. So it's really pretty in my opinion. And actually the translation is really good, so if you're Polish and you don't want to read the original text, I actually think that who translated it, Jerzy Kozłowski did a really good job. When it comes to just academia book, because it said academia or dark book and movie, so I also want to recommend The Idiot by Amy Batman. And this is about this young girl who enters Harvard University. I found it really funny. And she does talk about uh, her classes a lot, and she talks about like what they do in those classes. It's definitely not a dark book. It's more of a, like a campus novel, and it, it has a very specific writing style and a specific sense of humor. But if you like find the first like few chapters funny, I would say continue. But if you like from the get go, you just don't like the writing style or like the humor, I'd say don't continue because I don't think you'll like it. The second half kind of takes a turn and it's not set at university, but it's interesting because the second half talks about how the main character has to kind of confront what she learned at university with reality. So it was interesting. It was actually talking about a very interesting theory. What, what was it called? Uh, Sapir, Sapir Worth? hypothesis, I think it's called, and it's about how language, like the structure of language influences how we think. Yeah, it's very interesting and she, yeah, she talks about language a lot, she takes some literature classes, Russian literature classes, and I would definitely recommend it. When it comes to movies, I think Maris from 1987, I think, with Hugh Grant is a great dark academia movie. Maybe not very dark, but yeah. It is set at university and it's based on the book with the same title written by Ian Forster and it's actually one of the first books that included two males falling in love and it wasn't published until 1971 and it was written in the like 1910, 12, something like that. So this one's great. I really like the director, James Ivory, his director some great movies. And also when it comes to like a dark movie, I'd go for Shutter Island with Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm not even a huge fan of like thrillers or psychological thrills, but this is just as good as it gets. Okay, <laughs> second question. What dead poet would you like to have a drink with? So my answer would be Wisława Szymborska. She is a Polish author, poet, and she actually won a Nobel Prize with her poetry in 1996 or 7, I don't remember. And basically, because she, she won a Nobel Prize, you can easily find her poetry translated into English and probably other languages too. So I would definitely give it her a shot, because she's so, she's so witty and sarcastic, but also so like nice and soft-spoken. Like, like sometimes she's sentimental, but she kind of balances that sentimentalism with humor and like irony. And it's just a perfect balance. I love her poetry, so. I feel like she would be a really cool person to have a drink with. Then we have a question, what is your favorite painting and slash art sculpture? So I'm going to like straight up say that I don't really know much about sculpture, so I'm not going to tell you about my favorite sculpture. Like, whenever I go to museums and there's a sculpture, I'm just like, yep. That's a sculpture. <laughs> just like, no thoughts. Yeah, I guess I just can't appreciate sculptures. That's that's what it is. <laughs> but when it comes to paintings, I have quite a few. The, the first that comes to mind is a painting by... 
I'm not sure how you pronounce his surname, but it's Paul Zignac. I will put it on the screen. And the, the painting is um, The Pink Cloud. Uh, I remember seeing it for the first time. I was in a museum in Boston, and I was, you know, going from room to room looking at those, like, various paintings. And I saw in the corner of my eye a painting in the hallway, because, like, normally in museums you have, like, paintings in, in like, rooms, but also in the hallway. And I saw it, and I was just like, oh my god, what is it? I gotta see it. And, like, just went straight to it. And it's so fascinating, like the colors are so vibrant and I like the like style, I don't know what it's called, but like the style of the painting, I really like it. I will show on the screen a few other paintings painted by the painter. I will insert like a very short clip of some other paintings I really like. So if you don't care about paintings, um, skip ahead like 10-15 seconds. Then we have, what is your favorite architectural marvel? And that was a hard question, really, because I've traveled, like, a little bit, sure, but I, I've seen some, you know, beautiful buildings, but nothing really kind of stuck in my mind, except for one thing. And I feel like, I'm not sure if it counts, but there's this housing complex, actually, in Montreal that's just so ugly. <laughs> it's called... Habitat 67, I think, and I remember being in Montreal and I was on the other side of the river because it's near the river, the housing complex and, you know, I was just like walking with my brother and my mom and I looked on the other side of the river and I was like, what is this? All three of us were just like, what is this building? Are those buildings and yeah it just look, looked like a scene from like a post-apocalyptic movie and like those buildings are so ugly but so interesting and like so weird they're like this like weird cubicles and yeah i don't know if this is a good answer to this question but it definitely like i remember seeing it for the first time being like who thought this was a good idea but at least i remember it <laughs> and you know it, it left a lasting impression so i googled it and i think it's called the style is called Bertolist architecture or something like that, so that's interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a good answer, but yeah, whatever. What tricks will play would you like to be the lead in? And I have to say, I'm not sure if I'm a lead material. I feel like I'm better suited to be casted as someone who plays a bit more in the background. <laughs> I feel like being a lead is just so much pressure, I, I don't think I could do it. But there is a role that I really would like to play and I feel like suits me perfectly. It is uh, the role of Jacques, I don't know French so I don't know how to, you pronounce it so I'll put it on the screen. Jacques from As You Like It, I really like the play. As You Like It is a comedy and it's such a like funny little play but like Jacques is such a melancholic character and he's always like in the corner of the scene being like uh life sucks and you're all hypocrites <laughs> and I'm just like this is a role for me I actually so a little tangent but should I wait should I turn on the lights okay I'll finish this story and I will turn the lights so I actually last semester I attended this class that was about Shakespeare adaptations and it had two teachers one was kind of an expert in like stage adaptations and the other was uh, an expert in like movie adaptations and it was a really interesting class and our final project was to choose a play and a specific scene where we would like write like director's notes that would suit kind of our interpretation because we could kind of set this play in any period of history that we liked and like basically they said like our imagination is the limit so yeah we had to like do all the director's notes and cast the whole you know um, play so all of the characters we had to had to be like casted by like actors we wanted to use in this play we had to describe all the costumes we had to describe all the scenography and we had to like like a short essay about our in interpretation of the play and also we had to include like a mood board, like kind of like a Pinterest page um, so they could understand what kind of vibe we were going for and basically I, uh, I cho I've chosen as you like it and I kind of made it about climate change and in the end kind of Jacques uh, turned out to be the most important character of the story so yeah, it was very fun it was very like nerve-wracking because I wasn't sure if I was doing it right but yeah, in the end I got an A so <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn on some light because I feel like this is far too dark 
this is better I feel like it's better okay yeah this is far better okay question number six how many languages do you speak and which language would you most like to learn so my native language mother tongue <laughs> is Polish and I guess I can speak English you can be the judge of how well I can speak English I also learned German for six years at school I was kind of in a bilingual class but to be honest <laughs> I forgot most of it at this point because I didn't have like a chance to use any German after high school. I also learned Korean for three years at university. Not, not like as a major, I'm a sociology major, but at our university we had to take kind of a language class, so I've chosen Korean. And yeah, I learned for three years and uh, to be honest at this point I think I can both understand and speak, definitely speak in Korean better than in German, so there's that. And the language that I would really like to learn is French. I kind of want to learn French out of the spite, which is bad, but I really like learning new languages, so it could be fun. But I feel bad because every time there's a word that kind of comes from French originally, I never know how to pronounce. And everyone keeps telling me that oh, French is such a hard language, like you shouldn't even try. So I'm just like, no, I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, I do, I, I do want to learn French out of pettiness. Next question. What is your favorite quote from poetry, prose, plays, etc.? So I have a few. I actually have all of my quotes, all of my favorite quotes on my like Goodreads page, so you can search that if you want. One is very short. It's from Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And I feel like you need a little bit more, more context. But basically, um, it was there was this chapter about this character who lived on an island. It was a very beautiful island, and throughout this whole chapter, he was talking about how about his childhood there. And at the end of the chapter, he says it was gorgeous and claustrophobic. I loved it, and I always wanted to escape. I don't know why, but it just like hits me. <laughs> There's also obviously a quote from The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I like the idea of living in a city, any city, especially a strange one. Like the thought of traffic and crowds, of working in a bookstore, waiting tables in a coffee shop. Who knew what kind of solitary life I might slip into? Meals alone, walking the dogs in the evenings, and nobody knowing who I was. I really like that one. Okay, and the last quote real quick is for from The House of Mirth by Eddie Wharton. She hardly knew what she had been seeking, or why the failure to find it had so battled the light from the sky. She was only aware of a vague sense of failure, of inner isolation, deeper than the loneliness about her. Then we have what fictional character's death is your ideal way to go. <sighs> This is actually my second time recording it and the first time I recorded it I gave you an answer and I kind of changed the answer to what I think is the most possible way for me to die. <laughs> and after finishing filming it I realized it's um, that's very dark so <laughs> you know what? I don't have an answer for this one because I guess the, the best way to go is you know dying in your sleep when you're old and accomplished. But yeah, I really don't know. What university slash college would you most like to attend? I also have a pretty cliche answer for this one, but pretty much any university in Edinburgh. I just would la love to attend an university in Edinburgh because it's such a gorgeous city. I visited Edinburgh like two years ago, I want to say. And I visited quite a lot of cities in Europe. And that's along with Vienna, Edinburgh is probably my favorite one. Yeah, I just love, I love the atmosphere. Like, literally every building looks like it's haunted. <laughs> well, I love this. But yeah, I, also, uh, I remember when I was visiting my brother in Dublin, I quite liked how the Trinity College looked like, so that also could, could be my choice. But yeah, Edinburgh, definitely, number one. I don't know, University of Edinburgh, I guess, could be fun, but like, any university in Edinburgh. <laughs> now we have a very dark question. What is your murder weapon or murder method of choice? Okay, so if FBI or like police is watching, I would never kill anyone. I do not own any weapons. I do not own a gun. But to answer that question, I do think a gun would be my weapon of choice. <laughs> Quick explanation. I actually went to a shooting range once and, you know, they count kind of your points depending how well you shoot. And I did surprisingly good, so I guess a gun. <laughs> What mythology would you most like to be a part of? Okay, I don't have a, an answer for this one. I never cared for mythology. Uh, I know there is a lot of people who really like mythology and like learning about mythology in school. I was never that kid. <laughs> There's a lot of people who like mythology and liked learning about like ancient Egypt and those kind of stuff. And for me, kind of history was 
the most interesting from like the 16th century and up. And yeah, so no answer. If you had a PhD, what would you choose to do it on? So if we're being technical here, I guess the most possible PhD for me right now is sociology because I did, you know, a bachelor's in sociology and a master's. I mean, I finished all of my classes when it comes to my master's degree, but I'm still writing my thesis, so I still don't have, you know, a master's degree technically, but I guess like the most probable one would be sociology, but if I could like choose anything, like regardless of what I did before that, I think I would go for film studies. It's such a useless like major but like I don't know sounds fun and next which fictional character would you die for probably an Elliot for per from persuasion she's an angel and she doesn't deserve anything but happening to her ever also like maybe Theo Decker from the Goldfinch there's just so many things bad things happening to him the whole time I was reading the Goldfinch I just wanted to give him a warm blanket and a hug so Theo Decker probably too and then we have rapid rapid fire questions I'm supposed to pick one, so leather bound or club bound club books? Leather bound, dog earring pages or highlighting pages? Dog earring pages, sculptures or, or paintings? Paintings, piano or violin? Piano, I learned piano for four years or something like that and I really enjoyed it. Films of, or theatre? I don't know, as you can tell I really love movies because like I've chosen film studies for my PhD in that previous question but I also love theater like I work a uh, theater for two and a half years kind of as a person who like kind of helps the audience like find their seats and stuff like that and that sounds boring but like because of that I could watch so many different plays in Warsaw in different theaters too so I really I really like that job and I really enjoy reading plays so I have no idea I, I can't choose I, I love both films and, and theater so poetry or prose prose museums or bookshops so, um, I mean, I do love bookshops, I love, I love the atmosphere of bookshops and it's really important to support your local bookshops, but also I'm broke, so most of the time I'm buying books online, <laughs> and I don't know, you can buy books online, but you can't really buy most of the things that are in museums, so I'm gonna choose museums. The smell of books or the smell of coffee slash tea? The smell of coffee slash tea, definitely, especially coffee, I love coffee. Fountain pen or typewriter? Typewriter, I feel I'm a very like clumsy and like messy person, so I feel like I would get the ink all over my hands when it comes to the fountain pen. New or used books? I'm gonna go with new because uh, I live in Poland, so it's like used books written in English are not very accessible for me. Like I just can't go to any bookstore and find used books in English that easily. So even though I I do love used books, they're not very accessible for me. So new books. So I guess that's everything. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next video. Bye!